Good morning and welcome to worship at Bethany Presbyterian Church. We're glad that you've decided to join us this summer morning and we hope that um, you will enjoy the service and feel restored and renewed. As we begin our service this morning, we had just a few announcements that as always, uh, you are invited to join us for our Zoom worship, which immediately follows this service at 11 a.m. It's more informal. It's been really wonderful. Many church members have sh been sharing um, a little piece of their faith journey. We have different people who often will uh, perform a song. So we hope that you'll join us for that. And then also on Tuesdays at 11 via Zoom, we meet for an informal Bible study. And on Wednesdays at 11, we meet for a Zoom check-in where we just chat about how things are going. So you're all invited. And as always, all of the links for those Zoom meetings are found on our webpage at BethPrez.com. Um, just also one other note is yesterday I had failed to remind folks of this last week, which I apologize about, but yesterday we had a nice um, morning walk at the Blue Heron Trail down outside of Elk Grove. There were about nine of us who just started the day with a little morning prayer and spent some time walking on the paths there. So that was a good time. We hope to continue to offer special little ways to do things in a safe, socially distant manner, um, but we hope that uh, you'll join us. So let us prepare for worship, and as we do so, we will remember our baptism. And we are remembering many stories in the Bible um, when things often get bleak and heavy, but we remember that that wasn't the end of the story, that God came into the midst of the struggle and was able to birth something new. So we remember that, and we remember that as God's children who have been named and claimed, that God has a plan for our lives too. Amen. As you are gathering and logging on, I invite you to pass the peace with one another, to share um, some news or just a simple hello with other people who are on Facebook. And as you're doing that, we are going to read our scripture today from Mark chapter 4, verses 30 through 32. Listen to what God's Spirit is saying to, this church, to, to God's people this day. He also said, what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on earth, yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Natalia. Let us pray. God, as always, we give you thanks for this day, this time to gather and be renewed and restored by your word. And as always, we trust that your spirit would move so that we may hear the word that we so long for this day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, Rowena and I watched a fascinating Nova episode on PBS the other night. It was called The Rise of the Mammals, and it explored what happened on Earth after a massive meteorite led to radical climate change and the demise of the dinosaurs. When this meteorite slammed into the Yucatan, initially this fiery plume scorched the land, but then a huge cloud of sulfur blotted out the sun, causing the earth to cool. And this created a very hostile environment for life to survive, so much so that the dinosaurs and many other creatures died off in mass, as did most plant life as well. The earth was traumatized and scarred. But in time, some of the clouds began to clear, and the earth began to heal through the presence of a very special plant, ferns. When the conditions were right, ferns began to cover the face of the earth, and they kick-started the restoration of a verdant, healthy planet. Ferns, like mustard seeds, have a great ability to propagate and to spread far and wide. Both plants also benefit other species. Ferns provided food for our earliest mammalian ancestors, and mustard seeds host birds' nests. In today's text, Jesus speaks about the kingdom of God being like a tiny mustard seed, which takes root and then grows larger than the other plants. It becomes so big that birds of the air nest under its shade. It's such beautiful imagery, something so tiny and insignificant and vulnerable can go on to be transformed into a sanctuary where birds find refuge and safety, even respite from the heat of the day. It would also be a place where one could be nourished and healed from injury. As I watched this program about this meteorite strike, I realized that even the earth, just like we humans, suffers devastation and trauma. Indeed, all of life seems to be constantly undergoing evolution in slow and subtle ways, but in also rapid and chaotic ways. Most of us have suffered trauma at some point in our lives, and it leaves us reeling. We may experience a terrible accident or are wounded by another person. A job may abruptly end or we're blindsided by a health diagnosis. Some of our cherished relationships end in bitterness, and we all will lose people we love. Some even face the trauma of imprisonment, sexual assault, gun violence, warfare. The truth is that in the same way that our planet and the moon are scarred and covered by craters, we too have scars physical and emotional ones, which cover us. Such traumatic experiences seem to stand in opposition to the abundant life that Christ promises. They're painful and overwhelming, but if we're honest, we'd acknowledge that life at its very core is all about change in a continual cycle of life, death, and rebirth. Jesus' own life is a testament to this reality. We celebrate that Christ was raised from the dead 
and we profess that we too will be raised again to be with God and all those who've gone before us. As Christians, we are resurrection people who believe that all around us, life is ending as well as being reborn in so many new ways. In the midst of all of these ups and downs of life, of joys and pains, triumphs and traumas, we hold on to the hope that Christ is with us. We've been given the gift of the presence of the Holy Spirit, an enduring hope of God's eternal love. Moreover, let us not forget that a core part of Jesus' ministry was healing people. Jesus healed people with tremendous trauma, a bleeding woman, blind men, people tormented by demons, a man with a withered hand, even a deceased girl, and a dead man named Lazarus. Our faith, just like the tiny mustard seed, begins with this little bit of hope and can then grow into an abundant, nourishing garden, the very kingdom of God. Love, then, is the key ingredient, the fertilizer, if you will, which initiates the healing and transformation. One of the greatest healing powers we can experience is the gift of love. Love makes everything better. As Christians, we assert that God is love. We profess the power of love, of God's love for us, and we sing that they will know we are Christians by our love. As for me, I now consider the lowly fern to be a symbol of love. For the fern was the only thing that was able to withstand such an inhospitable place as the face of the earth after the meteorite hit into this ashy fog and scorched earth, the fern took root and began to heal everything it touched. Ferns cleaned the air. They fed small creatures. They created soil for other plants to grow. In the same way, it is often only love that can enter into our most wounded and inhospitable places that reside in us. And then it sets us on the path to healing. Love has the power to change everything. Hardened hearts, hopeless spirits, even enemies into friends. So in closing, I pray God's healing for your lives, for whatever wounds you are suffering from. May God's love find its way into those desolate places of pain so that you too will be made whole again. With God, nothing is impossible, and God is always ready to begin this process with us. Take the leap of faith to experience love, to both give it and receive it, and watch wonders unfold before your very eyes. It may never become an official Easter symbol, like the butterfly or an egg, but I hope that every time you see a fern, you're reminded of God's endless, powerful, miraculous love and its amazing power to heal and restore the world and you. May it be so. Amen. Friends, I now invite you from the comfort of your own home to think about the gifts that you bring to the table that God has blessed you with, your time, your talent, your treasure, um, ways that you can help the Bethany community and our larger community to be healed and to bring more love in the world. And don't forget that if you do have a gift you would like to share, um, you can also do so online on our webpage. There is a Give button. Friends, as you go from this place, I had a poem to read. I think that probably 95% of Presbyterian ministers regularly read Mary Oliver poems, but I was thinking about how nourishing and restorative it was to go out yesterday to take a walk in nature, and I invite you to do so too. During these long days, 
least take time to get out, maybe go to the mountains or go to the coast or just go outside of your front door. So to close, this is a poem called When I Am Among the Trees by Mary Oliver. When I am among the trees, especially the willows and the honey locust, equally the beech, the oaks, and the pines, they give off such hints of gladness. I would say that they save me and daily. I am so distant from the hope of myself in which I have goodness and discernment and never hurry through the world, but walk slowly and bow often. Around me, the trees stir in their leaves and call out, stay a while. The light flows from their branches and they call again. It's simple, they say, and you too have come into the world to do this, to go easy, to be filled with light, and to shine. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the power and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all this day and ever after. Hallelujah. Amen.